I realize that when I do the videos for you, I tend to try to do things thematically. And for this auction, I decided I'm just, we have such a, dis, a variety, of, such a wide diversity of dolls that I'm just going to show you some of what I consider, let's call them really special dolls. And with really special dolls, we are going to start with this wonderful English wooden doll um, that has only had one owner since she left the home of her original um, castle in England. She's very, very exceptional. I want to turn her around so you can see her profile. She has original painting. She has her original wig. When I turn her around, please also look at the costume at the back and how beautifully it's made. It's an ivory um, silk fowl costume with interwoven and embroidered details of wonderful flowers. This is her original costume. We'll turn her around again. Come back to her face, which when I saw the photograph of this, I said, she is just really pretty. And I know this may sound strange to be saying, but when it comes to English wooden dolls, they're notable for several things, sometimes for their strong characterization, sometimes for really, let's admit it, kind of a homely face. And rarely, rarely one like this, that is just simply a pretty face, a beautiful doll. She is very lovely with her elongated throat, her wonderfully shaped face, her enamel inset eyes, the feathering of her brows and indication of the eyeliner around her eyes and that pert little, just a little hint of a smile is so wonderful. She has the cloth upper arms, which are typical, and her wooden hands with the fork-like fingers. Very honest, and I'm going to turn her once again because I want you to see her really kind of shapely legs. She has a, what would you call it, a well-turned ankle. Very, very nicely. And while we're there, look at her wonderful shoes, how beautifully they're made. And then let's look at her costume, which if we lift this, look at the quilted petticoat. So much work went into that. Can you imagine how much time someone spent making the quilting on this petticoat? Very, very thick and entirely hand-stitched, all of it. And while I'm here then, you can see the underside of her gown, which also, remember, those were cold winters in England, so they padded their clothing and has the original linen padding on it. And then turning it around, you can see the quilted panel at the front of the dress, the wonderful trim, and look at her accessories. She has a chatelaine, an early chatelaine, with wonderful pieces hanging from it, including this little embroidered piece with the date on it, 17, either 35 or 85, hard to read. 85 would probably be more consistent with her age, but that's, you know, you have to look at it and see for yourself. And including this little silver piece, with little tiny flowers inside. Well, what is that? I don't know, but it's very, very precious. Wonderful silk flowers and other great treasures. And over on this side, her little reticule that she's carrying. And inside it is something. Let me see what this is. Oh, look at that. It's a little silver trinket that could go in the shadow lane, and it has a little tassel hanging off of it. She probably thought this was her most precious piece, so she carried it in her own special bag. And finally, I want to tip her up. You notice her necklace. I want to tip her up and show you the top of her hat, which is very, very special also. So this would rank as one of my favorite dolls um, from the Bijou catalog. So in thinking of what I wanted to show you from this event coming in January, I decided I would show you just things that to me were a diversity of pieces, not necessarily going with certain themes, but just things that I had, things I wanted to say about each of them. This remarkable doll standing over here is truly remarkable, and she not only is, remains a mystery, but she's been the source of a lot of arguments here in the office, because we have argued as to who her maker was. I was committed pretty much at first to saying that she was so similar to the Jumeau, uh, early Jumeau portrait bébé known as the wraparound, which I think is a perfectly horrible phrase because who wants eyes that wrap around, but that's how they have described them because they're so wide. And she does bear a great resemblance to that portrait model. 
Her eyes, however, are really big and they're gorgeous. And this doll, I want you to think about this doll. This doll was made in like 1877, 1878, the very first of the Bebe's. They didn't make them in this size when they were the early portrait models. It was impossible. They didn't have the technique yet. She is the most delicate bisque. To find an early doll in this grand size is incredible. And her face is just extraordinary. And I'm going to turn her around so you can see her all the way around. This wig is one of the ones that are known as the extended length wigs. And I'm going to show you about that, too, because when you can ever find these, they're great. The actual mohair that came off of the lamb would have come to about this length. So when they wanted to have the luxury, so you can see the end of that length there, when they wanted to have the luxury lengths on these wigs, they actually would sew another extension underneath. So they would have these beautiful wigs, in this case, falling to hip length. And look at that extraordinary bonnet on her. And now we turn her around again. You can see her from her side as well as her eyes. She's just flawless bisque and she's absolutely spectacular and a stunning doll. Very, very different cut of her nose, not a deeply indented nose bridge. You can see it there very nicely on the side. I think, to me, one of the absolute keynotes of the auction and an extremely special doll. And speaking of special, anytime you can have a doll, a doll by Hooray, it's special. And we have here a Bebe Hooray, of which uh, Madame Hooray was not that noted. But her company continued to make dolls, and they made a Bebe Hooray actually into the 1880s. But the ones who were made in the 1880s had wooden articulated bodies. This is a very unique one that was the very, very first of her Bebe's because it has a good or perka body. Now, what is really remarkable about this, the doll is exactly the same size as her gutta perka uh, poupee, 17 inches. However, the dimensions change entirely because she's not a lady, she's a child. And we have a very, very plump little body, the plump little limbs, a very rare doll, very seldom ever shows up. We've perhaps only had maybe four or five in our nearly 50 years of doing business. In the front is another doll with a category or story that I like because I like anything that has provenance or some kind of a documentation to its original life. And included with this doll is a photograph of the doll with her original owner and the doll was wearing this original dress in that photograph. We've shown it to you here just wearing her little original factory chemise, which was hidden under the dress, because we wanted you to see how perfect that chemise was and how lovely the body. And now I'm not looking at the front of it. Are the eyes opening and closing? Because she has the rare wire level mechanism that allowed a child to open and close the doll's eyes. And do you realize how tenderly children would have played with dolls in that time if they were able to have that preserved all these years? This doll is precious because of provenance, original costume, original photograph that goes with it, rare sleep eyes, and a rare model. Now, speaking of little size, take a look at her. I have to lift her dress to show you. She has the very rare feature of the jointed knees, which is so desirable. I'm going to take her off the stand to show you exactly how this can work best. So this was designed so that the doll could have very, very realistic movements. She could be sitting on a chair and her little legs would bend appropriately. She could, as all little good girls did then, say her prayers at night because she could kneel by the side of the bed and say her prayers. And she could sit in a number of different poses. So this made her very, very desirable to have also made her very fragile to be preserved over the years. And that is why, not only because she was expensive at the time, but because she was, was, would have been susceptible to a lot of breakage, it's so rare to have one in the wonderful, perfect condition that this one is. And look at that sweet little face. Now, I brought this one in to show you because 
I've always been very partial to anything that was what I call late French period, but gorgeous costumes. In the 1912 SFBJ catalog, they had a whole page, a category, that they called poupée dame, lady dolls. And we were past the age of the classic French fashion kid-bodied or wooden-bodied doll now, and we were using, in this case, they were using the classic uh, German 1159 model head. But the body was very, very distinctly French, and if you saw it under here, very curvy, voluptuous lady body, and designed to wear fashions of the early 1900s, very, very stylized fashions. And I wanted to point something else out to you. You know how it's very fashionable to get what's called a French fingernails? Well, look at even then. That's how they were painted, with the white fingernails with the red edging around them. That is entirely original. Now, this doll was from the series called Poupe Dames, and she is wearing her original costume. I'm going to turn it around so you can see her. I'm going to pull his hat off, and you can see that she has the upturned um, little chignon at the back of the head and her original cap with the bows that match the dress, and it's designed just to perch on the back of the head to cover the chignon. All original, very, very stylized, beautiful, extravagant kind of trim on here with the little silk flowers, the wonderful mauve silk uh, pinafore. This is an a really extraordinary doll. Not the rarest of the dolls as dolls go, but to find it in this condition, virtually impossible. And while we're talking about originality, I brought in this little fellow to show you because, can you tell me the reasons? Well, one would be his original costume, which was probably made by Gump's department store in San Francisco because they specialized in this particular doll, which they commissioned to have from Kessner, made by Kessner, representing a little Chinese boy. Gump's of San Francisco in Chinatown would then have custom costumes made for the dolls and sold there. Over the years, we have had some come in with original labels on them, so to find them is great. But I will tell you what is also wonderful about him is they're ordinarily more like a 15-inch size. And so this is a really grand size for the 243 Kessner and making it very, very desirable to find. I put this doll in to show you because I think that she not only has that rare Paris Bebe face, which again has wonderful history and story behind it of the, the legal battle between um, between uh, Emile Jumeau and his foreman who broke away and started his own company and started making dolls that looked like Jumeau, and Jumeau sued him, and there was a big story about it, and Jumeau won and got the trademarks to use, got the rights to take that Paris Bebe away from the foreman, Den LAC, and started making dolls with very distinctive faces, and those faces turned into, they evolved into becoming the first of his 200 character series, which are great. This one is wearing an extraordinary original costume with so much detail on it. I think one of the beauties that I like about the French um, costuming, the original costumes, is they seem, they don't really jump out at you at first. They're not, like, they're not dramatic that way. But the more you look at them, the more you realize all of the subtle little touches that are just right, but not too far. And that is always how I describe the French costuming. Beautiful um, uh, Belgian lace coming down the front. The black, this is all handwork, this black edging on the silk, on the matching silk ribbons. Very, very stunning doll and a wonderful character-like face. I brought in one of the many Jumeaux in the auction to show you. Uh, we, have, um, we have also a Jumeau from Onan Bleu, which has its original costume that is very, very frail. I'm going to show you that one. And then we have this uh, brew, the smiling brew. Remember when I showed you Madame Rochard? I said the system for making the jewels was deposed in 1868. Well, here we have uh, Brew, who was also working at the time, and he deposed his wooden body, Jumeau, in 1868, at the same time, 1867, at the same time as the Paris Exposition. And then he deposed this head, this very, very unique smiling head, um, in 1872, 
which was at the very time that the Empress Eugenie and her husband were being deposed. And some say that this is a portrait of her, kind of like a memory of her, because she was beloved, even though at that point her husband was not. Um, I'm, I'm really interested in historical context of dolls and how things kind of fit together into a big puzzle. So whenever we can find something that is original like that, it's so fascinating to try to follow through all of the logic of when they were made, why they were made, any kind of stories that we can have to eventually kind of put everything together. Look at the wig. Isn't that gorgeous? Little soft ringlet curls, all original. And the seed work on her gown.